Hi, my name is Miguel from avoiderrors.net. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to convert a physical computer in the network into a virtual machine and upload it to our ESXi server. This same process applies for Windows Server operating systems and Linux operating systems as well. On this tutorial, I'll be using VMware vCenter Converter standalone. The link is in the description box below. You can download the free trial by signing up to VMware. I have already downloaded the executable here. I'll go ahead and install it with you guys. I'll leave everything default, agree to the terms and the installation location. You can select a local installation or a client server installation. Local installation means it'll install as an individual program. Client server, it'll integrate it into your VMware workstation if you have any among other things. I'll select the client server and continue. It gave me a port 443 already in use. It's probably being used by VMware Workstation. So I'll change it to a 448 and continue. Okay, done. Now let's run our converter. Here it'll auto populate the IP address and username of this machine. All you need to do is just install or add the password. I'm sorry and log in. You're logging in with the information on the PC you installed the vCenter. Now let's clone a machine. Click on convert machine on the top left corner. Notice that source and destination is empty. We need to add our source which is our computer and destination is our EXSI host. Also notice here in remote windows machine you can click on the drop down and select a Linux operating system instead of a windows. For this tutorial, I'll be cloning a Windows 7 computer in the network. I renamed this to server simulating a server operating system. Keep in mind, it's the same process. Now, all we need to do is just add the IP address of that PC, the admin username and admin password and click on next. Keep in mind, if you're migrating a Linux machine to click on the drop down and select Linux. Here is telling you that it needs to install the standalone agent to that machine so you can either automatically or manually remove it. I'll select manually. Now we have our source computer. Now select the destination type from the drop down. In this case, I'll select VMware infrastructure virtual machine. So it'll convert that physical machine into a virtual machine and send it to our ESXi host. So now enter the host IP address username and password and click on next. Now we have our source and destination. Additionally, you can change the name of that virtual machine instead of server. I can change it to Windows 7 if I want to. Next. Now our inventory for that IP address. And if you have multiple data store, you can select it from the drop down. Click next. I got an error. If I click on edit, it'll tell me. telling me the size of the source disk will exceed the capacity. Yeah, the EXSI server that I'm hosting is 800 gigabyte. These two drives are four terabyte each. So I'll disable them not to be uh, migrated to my server. So I'll click next. Everything should work fine and finish to start converting and sending that VM to my ESXi server. This process can take a long time depending on your system. Once done, we can head over to our server. Now notice that it also included that uh, computer into the inventory. That's awesome. But before we start, let's go to edit settings. And here we can change the memory. We don't need six gigabyte anymore. Two is fine. My point here is that you can add and remove things that you need or don't need. For example, I don't need an eight core processor anymore. I don't need four network cards. Once you migrate to ESXi, the operating system or server is fully customizable, adding things that you otherwise would have to buy. Now, in this case, I don't need the HD audio, so I'll remove that. 
Once I'm done, I click OK. And there, now just to make sure, I'll go back to the uh, settings here, make sure that everything is fine and saved. Perfect. Now I can go ahead and run my uh, newly migrated operating system, in this case, Windows 7. And it's running perfectly. Now it's exactly the same as the computer, as a physical computer on the network using less resources. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Miguel. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. Thank you. Hey, watch me allow multiple remote desktop sessions to Windows 10, all of them working on the same PC without interrupting one another. Just click on the thumbnail on the screen. If you would like to see more video tutorials like this, click on subscribe. Thank you.